what's up everybody welcome back to the channel today for another movie review uh because uh my good guy lucas and i were going to be reviewing the new film sick which is available as of now on peacock it did release january 13th and uh we got some things to talk about with this one we get a little bit of background information here uh so you, you know mm -hmm. You're watching us here or you watching us on a uh, team jbs uh channel uh either way you know when it comes down to lucas uh to, to, to horror you're either going to see uh, myself lucas or even zero uh covering the latest and hottest in horror films and uh you know we're, we're, we're film critics as well too and, and lucas covered a festival that i didn't and i never forget that he said <laughs> you need to check this film out i have no clue when it's coming and we've always had this type of commentary with one another yeah like this films i've seen i'm like dude when it's drop you need to you need to you need to find out and, mm -hmm. and that's just if you don't know the way of the land uh film festivals is where independent films are shown and released we get to see them mm -hmm. we can review them and you get to check out the review but you may not see that film for a very very <laughs> long time and i'm sorry that's what it is but like that's 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 our that's our due diligence for being able to cover as critics is that we have to put out the reviews and we're sorry mm -hmm. that you may not be able to see it a week a month or even that year or when it got released but lucas you know yeah. just to wrap this up lucas hit me up and said man listen the easiest the the the, the easy easily the best horror film i've seen this year is this film sick and I'm like, oh, yeah. well, he's saying it's the best. I need to see what's up with this joint. And he was just like, but I don't know when it's coming out. And then um, I got a message <laughs> sometime last week. And he was like, dude, it's coming to Peacock. I was like, oh, I'm checking it out. So I had a chance to check it out. And I said, we need to do the review for this because I, I I wanted to present my side of what I thought about this film. And I wanted to hear his side. I didn't let him talk about it. I said, I, he said, it's good. I want to check it out. And I, I had my thoughts about my favorite horror films. And sometimes we agree. Sometimes we don't agree. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to say, folks, if you have the peacock, if you have the cock, go ahead and jump on that wow. and watch this film. <laughs> this is a fantastic film. And the biggest one of the biggest highlights for me um, is um, I thought the plot was good. And I'm going to talk yeah. a lot about it. But there's very rare, very rarely do you see a horror film that has a plot with substance that work. Instead of just throwing all of the horror tropes in there, jump scares or slasher, mm -hmm. da, 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 and then at some point it just becomes brainless murders, killings, and whatever mystery. This one has a plot that our protagonist and antagonist make sense. Our antagonist you can completely sympathize with, whether you believe it or not, because we'll talk about yeah. it in a second. But it just all the way worked. So, Sir Lucas, I will say that you were right. This is a fantastic film. I don't know if it's still my favorite film uh, of 2022. Definitely not. But 2023, we're going to see what it does for me. Because that's how you rate it since it is this year. 2022. Um, this, yeah. this, the, the, the Sickening? Or The Sickening? What was it? The, I think it's The Sickening. Whatever. Hold on. Let me let me, let me let me look that up real quick. That's my favorite film. I'll get it in a second for you. But, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, but your favorite you, horror movie, The Sickening. Yeah, the sickening. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. that that yeah, was my yeah. joint. That was my joint. Um, but yeah, yeah, for you, sir. Uh, to talk, talk me, talk us through when you seen the film. What made you like the film? Uh, all, all the details. So everybody can catch up on the story here. Well, first, this is it, it's an old school slasher film. Yeah, and what I mean by that is a lot of times now in modern slasher films, and when I mean modern, I mean like 2010 and up. We up the body count to ridiculous totals because it's, <laughs> it's used in place of setting up thrills in film. This one here, you get two smart heroines and a low body count, but a purpose for the killer. And I love the point, you don't get the purpose to the end of the film. And it makes sense for the purpose of the killer by the end of the film. But here, it's just the way everything is set up from the isolation that happens to how the killers arrive to how the girls fight off how they attempt to survive everything that's happening on in this film i think it's it it was just beautifully set up and you don't necessarily get that a lot nowadays in this type of horror film like this was clearly someone uh, i think director is john himes who's also an amazing director along with kevin williamson who's an amazing writer and they got together and decided hey we're gonna make a pandemic set horror film but we're not gonna make anyone stupid Everyone's going to be logical in the decisions that they make. Even when the girls are running for their lives and doing everything to survive, they don't do anything that's not logical to attempt to survive. And I love every minute of that. Because, And then the movie, it, it kicks into high gear from the beginning. 
It reminds yeah. you of Kevin's past work, the screams and things of that nature by giving you the killing in the beginning of the film and then just hitting the gas. They give you a good 10 minutes of, hey, let's set up everything. And then they're like, but we're going to introduce this killer and we're going to keep it moving. Yeah. I love every element of it, plus the atmosphere. So I saw the Toronto Film Festival. So the element that I saw then was during it Midnight Madness screening. So yeah. just imagine seeing five films and then staying up at midnight to see the last <laughs> film of the night and this being the film I saw and everybody was enthralled by this film. When I say yeah. I did not hear a louder scream, a louder laughter, uh, just gas from the audience. It was it was an atmosphere that this film was set to thrive in. And then you could watch it at home and still get that same feeling of all the thrills, all the punches, everything you need to make a horror movie work. This movie did it. And I'm, yeah. a, I'm a fan of old school slasher films. Yeah. I love Halloween as my favorite because it's five kills in the entire movie, maybe. Yeah. Here, it's like four. Like yeah. It's not that many going on <laughs> here. And that's what makes the movie so good is because they said we're going to put thrills over gore. Yeah. And uh, that's so the most important part to me. Right, and I appreciate that because uh, let me let me correct. My favorite film of 2022 horror film was The Sadness, not The Sickening, The Sadness. It's on Shutter. It's a Korean uh, zombie, yep. mm -hmm. completely brutal onslaught of deaths left and right. It's I mean, the blood different. budget is out of this world. <laughs> I loved it though because it was just unhinged. And plus, I love Korean cinema, so it just worked. But I appreciate this. And really quickly, uh, what's happening in this film as the synopsis read during the pandemic, Parker and her best friend decide to quarantine at a family lake house alone, mm -hmm. or so they think. Um, and, and and you have to put yourself in the mindset. I know, folks, it's 2023, but you have to put yourself in the mindset of when this film was made. First of all, coming, it's still in a pandemic, but in the midst of certain protocols being lifted, and it still does feel like a pandemic film. The cast is very limited. Mm -hmm. um, you're not having too many folks in one setting together, but really take yourself back. And the film does a really good job in laying the foundation of what the pandemic nonsense was from the, the the level of what quarantining mean the level of how Man. did you wear your mask you know the 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 fears <laughs> uh, uh and, and and sort of the horrors of COVID-19 and people's perception of what COVID-19 was there's a scene where um we can talk spoilers because the movie is out but there's a scene very early in the in the, in the um in, in the film where uh, they're in the grocery store line and somebody coughs and everybody looks at them like holy shit and we're yes. saying that like it was like that and then you got scenes where you know you're, you happen to um, use your uh, disinfectant on your items that you purchased because you can't touch those. And on raw. yourself. On and yourself, yourself, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can get high and get drunk and have a, because uh, no one did this. Maybe, I don't know, but maybe you can do a disinfected party where you're just spraying it all around while you're doing everything. Um, but like they were trippy. You could tell by the use of the neon colors because that's what they do to imply that. Yeah. But understanding mm -hmm. the rationality be 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 between our two uh, protagonists here uh, in which uh, Parker and her best friend Rihi, 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 I think that was her name was. Oh, no, Mir, sorry, Miri, Miri, sorry, Miri. Miri. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And um, I, I love the fact that like uh, you know, they really built up the nonsense of what we did during the pandemic, but still yeah. had that very natural human element in terms of there being an intruder in the house and the yeah. instinctual decisions that they've made. Um, just the reasoning behind things. There was so many moments where I was thinking like, I would do this. And that's the commentary you have in horror film. And they yep. did it. They were doing yep. it. And I was just like, <laughs> I am buying into this. And then when you go to our antagonist here, I love this as well too, because understand that one, we have a grieving family who not mm -hmm. only lost the son because of COVID-19 complications, which were were completely traumatic for families people yeah, were definitely uh, completely I, yeah. I i can tell you right now that i have i had friends on facebook that was just all this anti covid 19 thing loses a friend and then say be safe out there folks wear your mask covid is real how many times have i seen covid is real so yeah. understanding that this was a mother who probably had that same extreme emotion of like oh this isn't a real deal loses her son shit gets really real then loses her other son in this home invasion thing and so she's completely unhinged i mean one son is enough and you just lost them two weeks ago and you lose loses another she's completely unhinged she's completely yeah. motivated her and her husband to take matters in her hand because 
and and listen this is the realest thing of the entire thing to me because i i felt the same i felt the same way about folks they had a party that was a super spreader we're never going to get yep. through this if people are doing mm -hmm. it and the fact they said oh y'all just out here on instagram COVID 19 da 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 all these COVID 19 hashtags. isn't real yeah. hey they were going at it at that party and parker was kissing everybody that moved it seemed like at the party and i love the point that in the end when parker said i'm not sick she said well you're asymptomatic because it's something especially especially as kids college kids they did not know what that meant and they would be like if i'm not coughing i'm good and that's how it spread the most is because of asymptomatic people and for her to be that way and for them to give her COVID test before they attempted to kill her hilarious <laughs> I it was it. hilarious, Joe, to give her COVID test before. Just to prove to her, like, oh, you're not sick, but you still have it. And that means you killed my kid. Or before we even knew who the killers were, when we see Parker escape the house and she pulls up to the car, and the woman's like, hold up, honey. I would save you, but where's your mask? Like, you can't come in my car without a mask. How many people remember doing the height of the pandemic? of just you couldn't go anywhere without a mask it's humanly yeah. impossible to do it like yeah. that's what made this movie so great because it took the horrors of the pandemic flipped it into a slasher film and gave the parents purpose for wanting to kill this one girl because they didn't want to kill mira they just wanted to kill parker yeah. but they would kill anybody who helped spread anything during that party yeah and like granted this is an independent film so i saw i saw some flaws in the film i'm not gonna say the film was perfect there was definitely flaws mm -hmm. but I, I i gotta say the biggest thing that this film um there's a couple of things with this film i think that uh missed out an opportunity one is completely un it's not their fault it's, it's circumstantial like you had an independent film and you got peacock to pick it up that's a big deal but if this film came out a year ago like when you saw it if that's when the film had it released this film would have been I think it would have been a bigger deal. A lot more people. And, and God knows if this film was one year ago, just one, I'm sorry, one year oh, ago man. to when you seen it. This is 20, November 2021. This is a huge film because as I love, yeah. one thing I love about horror films is, and, and, and you know, when I, when I do my reviews with Zero, I always talk about it, that I love surrealism in horror. I love the mm -hmm. idea of real horror that people do not identify as horror. There's a film that me and you both loved a couple of years ago called Spiral, which was about a gay couple who lived in a community yes. that didn't accept them mm -hmm. and they were being haunted. And it's sort of some cult stuff going on here, but yeah. understanding that while the cult stuff is easily identified as the horror, understanding that they were accepted in their community that they were trying to establish a life. Mm -hmm. The surrealism and horror here. And I think like as, as African-American men, we could talk about numerous stories of this. I think in this one, understanding the horror of catching COVID-19 in a time where we did not know what COVID-19 was. Yeah. The idea of, as, as we heard early in it, girl, you have to wear your mask. You know it could be airborne. That's false, as we hey. learned later. Yes. <laughs> but it was completely real that mother, people were just like, hey. yeah, you're right. Yeah, like, <laughs> Hey, back then, every man, COVID could come from anywhere humanly possible. So We had the slightest idea, and that's what this film did a great job of embodying, is them just being afraid of everything humanly possible. Yeah, so you 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 double layer caked it. You had the surrealism in the horror COVID nineteen, but then you had the surrealism. I mean, then you had the horror in the slasher aspect of it, and yeah. and, and 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 beyond that, they do they did use some other good horror tro tropes. I mean, you had the folks moving in the background. You had the jump yeah. scares. The, the score was working at a time, um, and then you had the haunted house aspect, uh, especially with Mary yeah. uh, when she had to splint in her head or her legs, having the wherewithal oh, to splint it up keep showing the shot of the guy on the ground that we knew eventually was going to get up and then eventually mm -hmm. when he did scared the hell out of me um her fighting how about this this is another thing i loved about this film how about the fact that that there was two women and her stalker boyfriend or ex -boy stalker lover ex boyfriend yeah. or whatever yeah yeah that they that they did not need him to survive this wasn't a final girl this wasn't nope. even a damsel in distress. These were two women that got themselves out of trouble to see the next day. I love that. You never, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna say you never, but you rarely see that the women get out of these situations by themselves. They weren't the strongest. They obviously was handicapped, one being hurt. Uh, one, yeah. and, and the obliviousness of them thinking they're alone. 
cut off off the grid and they did it i again i was cheering for them i said like, mary is she had to fake die <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and it worked i i love i loved it i loved it and i also wanted to say too, quickly the protagonist i actually felt a sense of uh fear from them because like yeah these are motivated parents here yeah <laughs> COVID night listen Co- D- y'all have to remember how wild folks were during the pandemic while these are two i can't even think of a nice way to say this but why these were two i'm not saying pro because they wanted it but two pro COVID 19 people are real do y'all remember the folks who did not think COVID 19 was real that was going after people that thought it was that's a whole nother yeah. element to this and, exactly. and, and granted if this film does good they got shit to work with here because they can show that to the folks that's like oh y'all wearing masks folks were attacking people for wearing masks. oh it's stupid mm-hmm. we gotta wear masks in here which i like they they got something here and granted the, the the pandemic window of movies are slowly closing because there was you know the yeah. time is passing but i love the fact that they were able to identify horror within the pandemic in a way that we haven't seen in pandemic yeah. movies and really make it connectability to it and i would love to see them now escape this horrific uh, home invasion to now them going back into society and folks looking at them in a different light like huh so yeah i actually think this is real you know or take sick to different places you can do it in different countries (laughs) i mean uh, unfortunately the pandemic seems to have bypassed us here at home but we have another country that currently is going through it in a worse way than we did like it's it's still there it's still available to make films based off of this and kevin williamson is i think one of the best at creating sequels off of his work so if he even decided to do a sequel of this it could really be good just from the angles that you could still attack this type of storyline from but here in this one this is great in every way shape form or fashion this is again my favorite horror movie of 2022 and i saw lots of them and it, it, it's just something that it's something when you could get to cheer for folk in a horror movie and they don't act stupid while you're cheering for them that's always been my problem is the the protagonist acts so horribly in the film and you'd be like i want to cheer for you but then i don't mind if you die yeah. this was the first film where i truly cheered for people since uh boy behind the door where i was absolutely cheering for those kids to survive i got that same feeling here with sick when I was cheering for these girls to survive and you see everything they go through down to the opening shot when the killer shows up from when it got parked in the bed and that pan shot that it does to sh- put the killer in view amazing yeah and even though DJ didn't survive I cheered for him too because like you know it's his story here in terms of like yeah. wanting to question Parker and her relationships and what this guy meant to him she's like you're not going to get the answer you want here he's like I'll just sleep on the couch and you know, from him to, to to him being impaled and that shot of him coming through the door mm. and his ankles is kind of like, you know, kind of what's happening with that and yeah. them slashing the tires out. That whole that whole thing was dope. So, um, but yeah, and I, to bring I, it back to the point that the what he was asking her about was the party where the kid got infected and died from. <laughs> and matter of fact, the guy he was asking her about was the kid who died. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they made it. This was a fun movie. They made it short and sweet. Got right to the point. I think it's only an hour and twenty three minutes. Uh, so yeah. I enjoyed that, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I this is definitely worth a watch. Uh, it's again on Peacock. Uh, folks, y'all, 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 y'all let us know, man. I, you, you can check it out and jump in the comments and do so. Uh, again, it's it's available now, so you can talk spoilers. We talk spoilers. Um, but yeah, th- thank you, Lou, for the recommendation here. And uh, y'all know what it is. About it. It's a couple of more. <laughs> whenever they get released <laughs> hey, whenever they get released i'm telling you we're gonna hop right back on here and talk about them again <laughs> anyway folks y'all jump in the comments let us know your thoughts about the movie sick and as always stay tuned for more reviews very soon